Oh, hello. In this video, we're gonna be doing something really cool where we'll be adding sound to our programs. This is exciting because it's really gonna breathe like a new life into our programs, which are kind of like, you know, they don't have any sound. And if we're gonna be making ga games, we should have some sound. So before we do any like coding, the first thing to do to like add sound is to actually get a sound. So I use a site called freesound.org. Now you can actually like make your own sounds and like, you know, send them to yourself and like use those, or you can use like, you know, MP3s or whatever you want to use. I just happen to use this website right here. Now, if you don't have uh, an account, which you probably don't, you want to go here and register, pause the video and make your account here and create that account. Once you're done registering, you know, come back and, uh, you know, log in and then we'll, we'll get started again. So now that you have your account, let's uh, search for sound. And I'm just going to like do a meow today. Let's just get a meowing sound. So I'm going to go get a meowing sound. And here's the thing, when you're looking at your sounds, the most important thing to look at is this. This is how long the sound is. This is a one second sound. So if I play it, there's a one second meow. That's generally what you want, right? But if you find like a, a sound that's like 27 seconds, it's usually not what you're looking for, right? If you're like doing a quick punch or like a, just a quick reaction thing, you want these short ones. So what I'm gonna do is grab this first one right here. All right, and then I'm going to download it. Now, just a quick tip right here. Um, if you ever see the type as FLAC, um, P5 won't work with that, but .wav works. So just a little tip. So I'm gonna download it. I'm gonna rename this meow, something that I can remember. Okay, and sorry, I don't wanna download it right now. Now that I've downloaded it, we're gonna do the same thing we did. We gotta upload it. So I go over here, let's upload the file. Boom, bang. And now it is uploaded. So the next step is just like we've done before, we're gonna create a variable. So I'm going to declare a variable. Uh, let's say let meow. I think that makes the most of sense. You could call it anything. I could have called it your mom, right? That doesn't matter. This is just a variable to hold the sound in, right? So now that I've done that, we're going to do what we did before with images, where we're going to preload it. So I'm gonna do function preload, and let's say meow is equal to load sound, not load image, right? And we just put in exactly what the file name is, which is meow.wave. I'm just copying down whatever the sound is there, done. And that's basically all the hard work. Like to actually play it is pretty easy. So check it out in the draw function, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna say this, if mouse is pressed, and remember that's just to check to see if my mouse is being like clicked, I'm going to play the sound, so check it out. This is all I have to do to activate it. I just say meow.play. That's it. So now if I press play here, check it out. You could hear the sound playing. But you'll notice something right there. It keeps playing over and over and over again. And that's because it's in the draw loop. And remember, if I'm holding down my mouse, it's like playing over and over and over. It's like and they're all overlapping each other. And that doesn't sound great. So usually when you use uh, this play and it's inside of the, the draw function, what you want to do is wrap it in a different conditional statement. So let's just add something here. So I'm going to do this. If meow dot is playing equals false. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put this inside of that conditional statement. So let's take a full look here of what, what we have here. So this looks, it makes a little bit more sense. So this right here is the sound. And what is playing does is checks to see if that sound is playing, all right? So if it, the sound is playing, this will be true. And if the sound is not playing, it will be false. And what I'm saying here is if the sound is not playing, right? So if the sound is playing, if that's not true, right? It's false, that is not a true thing, is not playing the sound. Well, then I do wanna play the sound. But if that sound is playing, if that's true, then it, it won't do it. It's like saying, if the sound is playing and that's true, that's not the condition I'm looking for, so then it doesn't play the sound. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm trying to say is only play the sound if it's not playing already. So now if I play this, you'll see that it kind of works a lot better and I'll get that weird overlap. And then it's like playing once it's stopped before and this sounds so much better. 
So that's it. That's how you play a sound. It's the same thing. Download it, upload it, right? Make your variable, preload it, and then you just have to really just say dot play, and that will play the sound. So this was like a fun, easy example. All right, so we'll move on to the second part of this video now. Uh, and this is where we're gonna do something a little bit more, um, a little bit more like interesting, a little bit more real worldy, right? Let's try to make like a very simple game. Let's do some like uh, Pac-Manning. Let's just do a little, a little Pac-Man stuff. So here we go. This is gonna be our Pac-Man example. Now you'll see here, I already loaded in Pac-Man and the ghost and they already move, okay? They already do some moving. And what I wanna do in this one is if the ghost catches Pac-Man, I wanna play a sound. All right, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Just when he catches him, they play a sound. But this is like a two-step thing. So basically what I want to happen is have a collision. So when they collide, I want the sound to play. So this is good just to review how to do collisions with images. Um, I think it's really helpful to keep doing that. So let's just take a quick look on that. So what I'd like to do is first to do the collision part of this, let's just make a new one and we'll call it Pac-Man Collide. All right, we'll make our variable. Now in the draw function, what we're gonna do is say is um, Pac-Man collide equals, and this is where we're gonna use P5 collide, collide rect, rect, all right? Now the two rectangles are these two images. So this is an image of Pac-Man, this is an image of the ghost. And what you wanna do is just grab these numbers right here. This is the position of both of these images. And you wanna grab it, including the variable, all right? Let's just grab this whole thing and put it in. So these are the two rectangles. And remember, images are really rectangles, right? At the end of the day. These don't look like it because you cut out the background, but they were originally rectangles. So notice how the X was brought in here. Now also notice that we didn't take the Pac-Man or the ghost because that's like, like the variable holding the image, which if you remember, collide rec rec just does the math to calculate if two things are colliding. It doesn't care what the picture is. It just cares where are these two things on the screen. It cares where the Pac-Man is and where the ghost is. So now I'm calculating where these two things are. And just to check to see if this is working, I'm gonna say uh, Pac-Man collide. Uh, and let's just put some text on the screen. I'll say text, uh, you died. It's kind of dark, but whatever, we'll do it. So we'll put that at like 200, 100. Let's do a text size of 30. And let's do a fill of white. All right, let's see if we can get this working. Just the collision part of this. This isn't even the sound. Okay, you died. Great, but we wanna add a sound in there. So what I'd like to do is just let's find a Pac-Man sound. So I'll go back here, let's go to Pac-Man. Okay, let's look up Pac-Man, let's see what we find. Okay, and you'll notice that these sounds are all, all a little bit too long. This is two minutes, this is 416. That one is good, but that's dot .flac. We know that doesn't work. So I think I'm actually gonna use this one. Yeah, that's, that's the one I want. So let's click on that. Let's download it. Sorry, I'm not gonna do donate, I'm so sorry. And we'll just call this one died, die. Dark, it's a dark one. All right, let's go back here. Let's go to File, Upload File. We'll grab it over here. We'll grab Die. Okay. And it's loaded in, it's right here. So now to get this working, let's just go let Die. In preload, I'm gonna say Die, die is equal to load sound. And what I'm gonna do is load die.wave. Okay, and then finally, all I have to do is add it in here. So I would say, once again, uh, let's just do die dot play. So when they're colliding, we'll have this text that says you died and we'll play the, the dying sound. So let's check it out, see how it is. There we go. dot is playing okay equals false so it's not whenever it's not playing well then we'll activate the sound so let's try this again let's just kind of see if this works better and here we go
let's go back there. <coughs> All right, so that's the whole thing. Uh, that's uh, what you need to know for today. So we know how to activate a sound. And it's really just this three lines of code right here. Once you've downloaded the sound, uploaded it, made your variable, preload it, this is how we're going to play it, right? This is the simple way, die.play, but we do want to wrap it in this conditional. Check to see if it's playing first, and if it's not playing, then play the sound. All right, that's it for this video. Peace out.